Okay, Friends of the Tea Woods, Chili Dragoon back on fucking Windows for you guys, so you can follow along better. Um, yeah, I sacrificed my soul to boot into Windows to deliver the best experience for you guys. Anyways, so let's get right into it. Last episode we covered a bit of basics um, of Git and today we are going to look at GitHub. So what is this GitHub stuff? Um, github.com is your friend uh, where the world builds software um, so git essentially is some decentralized version control system and what we did the last episode works totally fine without github so it's just a tool that tracks your changes you have a local folder called .git where all your changes are in and you can have this git folder on multiple devices and then um, also synchronize histories between those devices and that's working via git remotes and for example you can also add github.com as one remote so that this website uh, currently owned by Microsoft is holding also your git repository and this allows you to upload your code to github.com and also download it from there again that's pretty cool we already looked at Tworlds on github, github.com slash tworlds slash tworlds and yeah, like hosting the code on github allows you to share the code with everybody, allows you to save your code changes and yeah, it's just like some tool on top of git so to say, it's a git hosting website. Cool, so uh, let's press sign up and create some account here, enter your emails and stuff like that. Uh, you know the drill. Okay, I already logged in here, created a fresh account, uh, wonderful. So, what we now want to do is um, go to TWords, spell it correctly, and now what we did in the beginning of this series in the compilation episode is we pressed clone or download here and clone this git repository. But what we want to do now is actually fork this repository and create our own version of TWords on GitHub where we have access to push and pull data from so that we can host our version of TWords on GitHub. And how we're doing this is we press on the top right here on fork. This will take a second since it's like copying all the code, creating a um, own repository for you. And as you can see on the top here, we are having children to slash tworlds and it's frogged from tworlds slash tworlds. And now in the top address bar, we can see we are on github.com slash children to slash tworlds. So this is now your own repository, which holds all the tworlds code, but you have access here. You are like the administrator of this space. Isn't that awesome? Cool. So now let's move that away. Now we want to give our Git client that we have on our desktop access to GitHub. And the way we do that is via public private key crypto magic. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Open any type of terminal. I like to use this boy, it's called Windows Terminal. You can find it in the Windows Store. Um, if you go to the store and search for terminal, there you have a Windows Terminal this boy here it's by microsoft in windows 10 you have to download it from the store in windows 11 i think it's shipped by default you can also of course use the command prompt you can also use um, git bash you can also use powershell just using like the power of booting into windows to show you all the stuff that i was talking about uh, on linux that's how how you open a terminal on Windows, uh, you can use any of those. So if you type in here git, you can see I have git installed here, I have git installed here, I have git installed here, and I have git installed here. Awesome. Uh, looks much hacker, much wow. Okay. Anyways. Um, so how do I clear the screen here? I don't do Windows. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to create a SSH key. 
And the way we do that, we type in SSH. Can you even see something? Can we, yes, give me bigger. Yes, we want to do SSH minus key, whoops, SSH minus key again. That's the command to generate a SSH key. Then you press enter and then it asks you for a file location and it also provides you with a default so you can just press enter if you're fine with that and you should be fine with that because it's totally fine. Just press enter. Then you can enter a passphrase. So if you want to type in a password every time you push to GitHub to secure your GitHub account, you can enter a passphrase here. But don't cry if you forget it, then you're fucked. Um, well, actually, you know, you are not, but then you have to redo the process, whatever. Uh, don't tell anyone, but I like to use no password at all. So I just press enter and then re-enter the password. I just press enter, which gives me no password at all. Wonderful. Then it does some like crypto magic and it created a um, key for us. So I'm currently in the location users chiller, so I can do explorer why is my tab completion dying? Explorer exe dot, which is the same um, as I always did on uh, Linux. I always did Nautilus dot and on uh, on Mac you can have it open dot uh, to open a file browser in the current directory. Okay, so let's do explorer dot exe dot. And as you can see, we are now in my home directory. If you did it maybe over the command prompt, oh, you're also there. Uh, I don't know if there's any prompt that's not starting in the home directory. Maybe if you're in a different directory, then you have to navigate there first. You can also go there over the file browser. So if you press Windows E to open a file browser and then you, haha, you press on this PC and then this up arrow here. That's how I found my user directory. So you want to go like to slash users slash your um, username. Anyways, so if you find this folder, that's awesome. There we now have a folder called .ssh. So in here you have a id underscore rsa and a id underscore rsa dot pub file. Pub stands for public, so you can share it with everybody. Those two files were generated by the ssh uh, keygen command that we typed in here. This boy created those files. Um, right, so if you know nothing about crypto and magic, uh, there's this concept of private and public keys. So we created two keys and using like crypto magic that was developed by smart mathematicians, um, we have these two keys. So one is the private key and one is the public key. And if we share the public key to someone, this someone can encrypt data with our public key and only we with the private key can decrypt it. So we can share our public key with everybody and then everybody can um, send a challenge to us and we can prove that we hold the corresponding private key. So this is a way of identification and it's used on GitHub uh, to automatically authenticate, so to say. So if we go to our GitHub account, we go to the top right and press settings. Here we have SSH and GPG keys, click that boy. And we want to add a new SSH key. And in here we want to put in our SSH public key that you can safely share with everybody. So open the file, put the contents in here. Okay, so this key field is super important. Here you have your public key and then GitHub knows, wow, um, I sent this guy a challenge with the public key and only if he holds the private key, he can prove that it's him. And this way we allow this private key over here to have access to our GitHub account. And then we can push and pull from GitHub data without entering our password. That's pretty cool, huh? And since we can run SSH key again on every device, um, you don't have to copy over your key and keep it safe. You can use multiple keys. So I have a different key on my Linux boot, for example, and a different key on my laptop. 
So those pile up and to differentiate them, you have this title field here on GitHub. I like to call the keys depending on which device it's on and which boot it's on. So I have a dual boot here, I can boot into Linux and I can boot into Windows. And um, this main workstation I like to call porno. So I am calling this porno Windows. Wonderful. So um, that title is just for you, it doesn't really matter. Um, anyways, okay, cool. As you can see, we have our porno Windows key here. This is a short version of our public key and it was never used. So now our Git tool will look into our SSH folder and send its public key to GitHub. And GitHub will be like, uh huh, does this user have um, this public key in his settings? And if yes, we can access our GitHub account. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's go to the home and go to the TWORLDS repository you cloned. It's showing up here on the left. Or go to github.com slash your username slash TWORLDS. And now we want to clone this boy here. Instead of cloning TWORLDS slash TWORLDS, we want to clone your username slash TWORLDS. So copy that boy and close this. And now you want to go wherever you want to uh, put in your source code. I like to put my source code in a folder called git. In here I have a lot of repositories already. And let's open a terminal in here. And then we type in git clone minus minus recursive to also get the submodules. And then paste in the URL with right click in the terminal. Um, right. So make sure that you are using the git version. So it's prefixed with git add and here's a colon as opposed to the, where do we have it? As opposed to the HTTP version. Um, because the, the SSH version allows us to use the SSH key that we generated. The HTTP version does not support this key magic that we just set up. So use the SSH version, pretty important. And this allows us to clone our um, fork of TWORLDS. Then it asks us to uh, trust this because we're using some SSH key magic and it's like doing security stuff. Just do as it says, it says, are you sure? Do you want to continue? And then type in yes. So we just type in yes or lowercase and press enter. And bam, we are cloning our TWORLDS fork. Isn't that awesome? Okay, wonderful. Now that this is finished, uh, let's close it again. We can see we have now a folder here called TWORLDS that we just cloned. Now that we are in this folder of our fork, let's have a look at git stuff. Let's open the terminal here. Uh, we can run git status to see, A, everything is clean. We are on branch master, so far so good. And today I'm going to show you something crazy and that's remote. So we can type in git remote minus V to see that we have one remote called origin and it's pointing over here. So this is our fork of TWORLDS on GitHub where we have the permission to push and pull data from. Okay, cool. So let's redo what we did in the previous episodes. We can do um, some branch. So let's do git checkout minus b my mod. Created a branch, switch to it, wonderful. And let's edit something so that we have something to comment. Instead of editing some source code, let's edit the readme code readme. Um, delete all this garbage here and let's do some heading. This is my mod. This is my awesome mod like, share, subscribe. Wonderful. Then save the file and do a git status. Now you can see we modified the file readme.md. Uh, as you remember from the last episode, we want to do git add readme now, or we can just do git add dot to add all the files. Then we do a git commit. By the way, you can also do git commit minus m to provide the description instead of opening an editor. And we say like, uh, initial 
commit of my bot. Cool. Then we can do a git log to see that Chairdragon added this commit and it's called initial commit of my mod. Awesome. And now what we can do is we can type in git push and that will push to our remote. It will push to github.com slash Chairdragon 2 slash keywords. Okay, so let's do it. Git push. Oh, since we didn't push uh, this branch yet, we have to type in this long as command to um, push to this branch. Okay, so let's type it git push set upstream origin my mod. So what's happening here is it's saying fatal, the current branch my mod has no upstream branch. That means that the local branch that we created, my mod, has not configured any remote that it can push to. So we can just type in git push and we have to initially type in once uh, git push set upstream origin my mod. Otherwise we can just do git push if we configured it. So the first time we have to configure it, then git push does work uh, fine. By the way, you can also do git push minus u, which is a short handwriting for set upstream. Okay, so let's do that and it's pushing wonderful so now if we go back to github we can see it popped up in green here that we pushed something to my mod and we can have a look here if we select the branches uh, in the last episode i showed you that we have the branches master 0 0.6 and editor and now we also have the branch my mod and if we switch to this branch we can see this branch is one comment ahead of tworlds master so we have one comment more than the master branch and here you can see it's me and if we scroll down to the readme it says my mod this is my awesome mod blah blah, blah like share subscribe cool <clears throat> so this is how you um create your own branch upload your code to github and have some fun okay so let's quickly dive into another concept let's say you're so convinced about your changes that you want to share it with your official tworlds repository so um, if you coded something and you want to get your code into the official TWIRTS release, you can do something that's called a um, pull request. And it's already advertising it up here. Since we just recently pushed to a new branch, it's saying, hey, do you want to compare and pull request and create a pull request to um, TWIRTS? So note that we are now um, not anymore on children 2 slash tworlds, but, but we are on tworlds slash tworlds. That means we can propose our changes to get merged, like merged means like integrated, so to say, and added to the official tworlds release. And here you can see we have um, my changes. I removed all the readme stuff and I added these new lines. Then you can describe your change here and saying like um, the old readme was too long, uh, this is much better, whatever, something like that. And then you can click here, create a pull request. I'm not going to do that right now because otherwise we like uh, send 80 mails or mails to 80 people who are watching this repository. and. Uh, this is just a junk, so don't do that. But if you have something valuable, you can create a pull request and that's how it's done. And then they end up here under the pull request column. You click on here and you can see other people are currently um, pull requesting stuff. They are waiting for the uh, TWIRTS maintainers to have a look at them. And then you can discuss it in the comments and then either your requests gets merged or it gets uh, rejected. Wonderful! So let's have a look at some exemplary um, pull request. This one, water concept, pretty interesting pull request. As you can see, this boy went all the way to also add some images to preview his changes. We can see there's a pro proposal for water being added to keywords um, and it's described here. Much text, then people can like react to it. It's basically the social network of developers. And as you can see, Foconaut reviewed these changes and he said like, whoa, there's something going on with this code. 
um, can we do blah 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 and then our favorite guy Robert Müller also had some opinion on that and then this green guy was like acting all weird and as you can see we have some discussion here um, yeah so if you're interested in the development of T-Words I can highly recommend you browse around here look at the pull requests and um, also look at the issues which is which are no code changes but just like it's the to-do list so if you have some issue uh, with the T-Words project you say something is broken or you want a feature you can go here and create a issue for example this guy wanted to create um, standard race maps for T-Words so he was like hey blah -de blah I have these reasons um, it would be cool to have maps in this format and then people can comment on it and discuss these ideas so that's how github looks like that's how you create pull requests that's how you create your own branches isn't that wonderful yeah so that's pretty much it um cool have fun with that